Hey everybody, Linus here. Today we're diving into the world of cybersecurity with a tool called Hydra. This tool is often discussed in the realms of ethical hacking and penetration testing. It's a fascinating piece of software that has both its advocates and critics. Now Hydra is a powerful password cracker that can be used for good or bad. It's a double-edged sword, much like many tools in the cybersecurity world. On one hand, it can help security professionals identify vulnerabilities in their systems. On the other hand, it can be misused by malicious actors to gain unauthorized access. It's like a really sharp knife. You can use it to chop vegetables or you can use it to, well, you know. The analogy here is that the tool itself is neutral. It's the intent and the user that determine its ethical standing. Hydra works by trying out different username and password combinations against a target system. This method is known as a brute force attack. Essentially, it automates the process of guessing passwords, which can be incredibly effective but also time-consuming depending on the complexity of the password. It's like trying every key on a giant keychain until you find the one that unlocks the door. Imagine having a massive ring of keys and systematically trying each one until you find the right fit. That's essentially what Hydra does, but in a digital context. And believe me, Hydra has a lot of keys on its keychain. The sheer number of combinations it can try is staggering, making it a formidable tool in the hands of someone who knows how to use it. It supports a wide range of protocols, making it versatile for various penetration testing scenarios. Whether you're dealing with HTTP, FTP, or even databases, Hydra has you covered. This versatility is one of the reasons it's so popular among cybersecurity professionals. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. It's crucial to use tools like Hydra ethically and legally. Unauthorized access to systems is illegal and unethical, and it can have severe consequences. We'll get into the ethics of all this later. For now, just keep in mind that ethical hacking is about finding and fixing vulnerabilities, not exploiting them for personal gain. The goal is to make systems more secure, not to break them. For now, let's move on to installing Hydra on your Kali Linux system. Kali Linux is a popular choice for penetration testers and ethical hackers because it comes pre-installed with a variety of tools, including Hydra. We'll walk you through the installation process step by step so you can get started with your own ethical hacking projects. Now before we start, I want to emphasize that everything we're doing here is for educational purposes only. Don't go around trying this on systems you don't have permission to test. Luckily, installing Hydra on Kali Linux is a piece of cake. You see, Kali already comes prepackaged with a whole arsenal of security tools, and Hydra is one of them. So you don't actually need to install anything. Just open up your terminal and type in Hydra. If you see a bunch of options and usage instructions, you're good to go. All right, now that we've got Hydra up and running, let's talk about choosing a target. Selecting the right target is crucial for your penetration testing practice. For this demonstration, we'll be using a virtual machine running a vulnerable web server. Virtual machines are perfect for this purpose because they can be easily configured and reset. This is important because you never want to practice on a live system without permission. Unauthorized testing can lead to serious legal consequences and disrupt real-world services. That's like practicing your archery skills on a moving target. That's also on fire. It's chaotic and dangerous, and it won't help you improve your skills in a controlled manner. You'll need the IP address of your target system. The IP address acts as a unique identifier for the machine you are targeting. Think of it like the street address of a website. Just as a street address directs you to a specific location in the physical world, an IP address directs your network traffic to a specific device on the internet. To find the IP address, you can use a tool like Ping or ENS Lookup followed by the website's domain name. These tools send a request to the domain and return the IP address associated with it. Understanding the network topology is also essential. Knowing how different devices are connected can help you identify potential vulnerabilities and plan your attack strategy more effectively. Always remember to follow ethical guidelines and legal requirements when conducting penetration tests. Ethical hacking is about improving security, not causing harm. Setting up a lab environment is a great way to practice safely. You can simulate real-world scenarios without the risk of affecting live systems. With your target system set up and your tools ready, you're now prepared to start your penetration testing journey. Happy hacking! 
Now comes the fun part, launching the attack. Hydra uses a command line interface, which might seem intimidating, but it's actually pretty straightforward. The basic syntax is Hydra, options, target, protocol, word list. Let's break that down. Options are things like the port number or the username. Target is the IP address of your victim. I mean target. Protocol specifies the service you're trying to crack, like SSH or FTP. And word list is a file containing a list of possible passwords. Section 5. Understanding Hydra's commands. Hydra has a whole bunch of commands and options, each with its own purpose. For example, you can use L to specify a single username or L to use a list of usernames. You can use P for a single password or P for a password list. And if you're feeling lucky, you can even tell Hydra to try a random combination of characters instead of using a word list. But be warned, that could take a while. Section 6. The Ethics of Password Cracking Now before we go any further, we need to talk about the ethical implications of what we're doing. Password cracking is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it can be a powerful tool for cybersecurity experts to identify and fix vulnerabilities in systems. On the other hand, it can be a weapon for malicious actors looking to exploit those same vulnerabilities for personal gain. Password cracking tools like Hydra can be incredibly dangerous in the wrong hands. These tools are designed to test the strength of passwords by attempting to guess them through various methods, such as brute force attacks or dictionary attacks. While this can help improve security, it can also be used to break into systems without authorization. Imagine someone using Hydra to break into your bank account or steal your personal information. Not cool, right? The consequences of such actions can be devastating, leading to financial loss, identity theft, and a breach of privacy. It's important to understand the potential harm that can come from using these tools irresponsibly. That's why it's so important to only use these tools for ethical hacking like testing the security of your own systems. Ethical hackers, also known as white hat hackers, use their skills to help organizations strengthen their security measures. They identify weaknesses before malicious hackers can exploit them, providing a valuable service to society. Think of it like being a superhero. You have these powers, but you only use them for good. Just as superheroes have a code of ethics, so too do ethical hackers. They follow strict guidelines to ensure their actions are legal and beneficial. By adhering to these principles, they help create a safer digital world for everyone. Section 7. Staying safe and legal. Speaking of being a superhero, you need to protect yourself too. When you're messing around with cybersecurity tools, it's crucial to take precautions. Always use a virtual machine, a separate computer that acts like a digital sandbox. That way, if anything goes wrong, your main system won't be affected. Also, make sure you're up to date on the legal side of things. Laws vary depending on where you live, but in general, accessing computer systems without authorization is a big no-no. Section 8. Conclusion. So there you have it. We've covered the basics of Hydra, from installation to execution, and even touched on the ethical and legal considerations. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Use this knowledge wisely and always stay on the right side of the law. Until next time, stay safe and happy hacking. Section 9. Disclaimer. This information is for educational purposes only. It is your responsibility to obey all applicable local, state, and federal laws. Neither the author nor any party affiliated with this content assumes any liability for your actions. Remember, hacking without permission is illegal. Stay safe and be responsible.